Welcome to the first game of Group B, bottom right-hand corner. We have Seraf starting as the pink Protoss, upper left-hand corner. We have Dentarg starting as the orange Protoss. This is going to be on Shakura's Plateau, which I, I'm trying to think, is this the first PvP we've had on Shakura's Plateau? I'm hoping this is going to turn into an interesting macro PvP. We'll see. A lot of times... PvP, you know, it's you end up with a slight build order advantage. I feel like what PvP I've seen mostly, and we've done a lot of PvP, <clears throat> is you end up with the initial build orders. Sometimes there's a little bit of adjustment in probe scouting to get a little bit of a adjustment and advantage in the overall build order scope. But then there tends to be like one or two big battles in the mid game. But this is a big four player map. So I'm hoping, hoping that we're going to see some of that, you know, more mid-game, more than just kind of the the one initial battle or the initial harass um, deciding, being the huge deciding factor and press on from there. And I think these are the two players to give it. Dentarg, I am familiar with. I've seen him around. Seraph, I have heard of, but I have not seen a lot of his games. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Anyway, hope everybody's having a great day. I was just ranting in Twitch chat that, man, yesterday, so this is when I'm casting this, it's what, July 20th? Yesterday was a really rough day. <laughs> really rough day. So it's just, it's nice to be able to sit down and cast. And I'm hoping I can turn kind of this, I don't know, casting, there's a bunch of reasons I cast. and But part of it is, you know, to show some love. And I hope that you guys out there uh, can feel it. And as I'm like decompressing and relieving stress that you... Uh, Feel that energy and are like, yeah, can can dive into it. We do see a gateway first builder. Are we going to see a double gateway? Double gateway for Seraph and actually no early scout off of it either. So this is a very risky opener in my opinion because for multiple reasons. One, there is a ramp. So if Dentarg is able to get an initial zealot and a dragoon out, oftentimes that can be the end of these sort of builds. So usually you do not see double gateway openers on ramped maps. Secondarily, he... He needs to find his opponent early, and also he needs to make sure that his opponent doesn't scout him to know what he's up to, because as soon as you see the double gate build, oftentimes it's basically it comes down to, okay, does does your opponent react properly to this? And he is building in the initial zealot. He's got that cybernetic score down. He does have three probes, putting that pylon. I believe sometimes this pylon can help with the probe pathing to get you a little bit more gas. Don't quote me on that, though. Dentarg making his way across. We do have a single zealot blocking the ramp. Now, this is going to be huge, is if this probe makes it into the base. Two additional zealots being produced. It is popping the simulator, so it's just going to be initial three zealot assault. So, wandering up, the gateways have been spotted, as well as the assimilator for Dentarg. Which is unfortunate, because now he's, first of all, he knows this isn't a full, it's not going to be full dedication. It's just going to be the three initial zealots, which lets him know what to produce or underproduce or overproduce. But also, this is kind of an, ooh, is that a manor pylon? That's weird because it doesn't look like a manor pylon on the map. But it looks like Dentarg able to sneak in and disrupt a lot of mining on top of everything else. And that's a little bit risky being the aggressor and going for that. Very risky. He's got a probe inside his base. The Zealot's making their way right across. I think he can still get away with it. He's plopping down an additional gateway now, just because this is such a long map. Three Zealots making their way across. The Dragoon should be able to press forward and get some free hits, but still going to need to micro this very cautiously, and that was very risky. You can see Seraph just running across now, actually deciding to re-engage. No probes being pulled, and it's going to be a little bit of time before that second Dragoon, but those two Zealots able to march right in to the main, they're going to get some probe kills themselves. So yeah, Seraph got a little bit of economic disruption, but might end up losing some probes as well. Trying to micro at two locations. There's one probe down. Two probes down. Finally, a second Dragoon. One Zealot has been taken care of. The probe's pulling off the line, but some nice economic disruption from Seraph to start. This does put him at an army disadvantage to follow this up, though. And this probe is still being a sneaky snake and inside the bottom left-hand corner of Seraph's space. Realizing that he's up two Dragoons, Dentarg is making his way across to go ahead and be aggressive. One Dragoon having to pull off to deal with this pylon to go ahead and equalize mining time. So right now, the probe count about even, but honestly, with this manor pylon being in place for such a long period of time, that was actually kind of a clever play by Seraph. I gotta give it, because with those Zealots having to push across, basically like, okay, I can place this manor pylon, and you're gonna have to deal with that somehow, right? And I also want to say, the probe escaped with one health. Amazing. So two Dragoons... A Zealot, and it looks like another Dragoon coming back to home base. It looks like he's thinking better of it. 
with the close reinforcement points, uh, the close reinforcement points, Seraph would be able to push this back a third gateway for Seraph. So he's opting to transition into a three gateway build. Dentarg looks like he's saving minerals to go ahead. Well, initially I thought to plop a Nexus down, but it looks like instead he had a probe in position to do it as well, but instead opting to go ahead and get a robotic facility. I'm wondering if he's going to go observer first. Seraph is making his way across. So initially what he is, he is, uh, kind of broadcasting is, yeah, I'm going for a natural expansion. You can see he's kind of showing it there. And on the opposite side, it's like, didn't quite show the probe in place, but you see the pylon, you see these units in place. So basically, Seraph has to be thinking, okay, there's a natural. I believe we're going to see a robotics facility instead of a observatory to follow this up, because I have to assume that Dentarg isn't just going to go two gate, kind of leave a probe here. Well, no, I take it back. Two gate, so looks like he is, in fact, going to opt two gate into Nexus. That should give him a slight economic lead. Fourth gateway down now for Seraph. So Seraph is going to be extremely aggressive on the ground. If he can get a robotics facility down early, he will be, it looks like, observatory first. Oftentimes you'll see an observatory, initial observer, and then a robo to follow. But he wants those reavers out sooner rather than later. Because Seraph, comparatively, is going to be producing a lot of units. I one thing I do not like from Seraph here is he's piling all these units right on the ramp. So if an initial probe snuck down here, I'm not saying the, the jig would be up, but it would convey that there's kind of a larger unit production than usual. Dentarg kind of scouting out here at the 9 o'clock location. Just one perhaps to place a pylon. He's maybe expecting a shuttle, something along those lines. Seraph making his way across with his initial attack force. He's going to be about even units. Here's the thing, though. Even with this 4-gate, this is a very large map, so the reinforcements are at quite a distance, which plays a significant role. But the robotic support bay just now, about halfway finished. And that Nexus is going to finish before there's a cancellation opportunity for Dentarg. So Seraph does have a window here with some micro where he might be able to press and overwhelm Dentarg with the units he has on the ground. However, the longer this match continues, the more opportunity there will be for Reavers. And actually, no, there's a second observer right here. I think Seraph might have taken this just on build order. We'll see. Observer coming across, seeing all sorts of units flooding this direction. Shield battery being plopped down, but that shield battery is not even going to be online. The pylon absorbing a lot of fire from these Dragoons. That might be a difference. One Dragoon already down. Finally, Seraph moving up and getting some micro probes being pulled. More reinforcements coming up. And Dentarg actually putting up a pretty solid defense. The Dragoons having trouble focus firing here, but this is still overwhelming amounts of units. The shield battery is up, but it is not enough. And that Nexus is now completely exposed. These two observers see everything, but it's just seeing the raining destruction down below. And yeah, not able to use the ramp advantage, and there's GG from Dentarg. That is unfortunate. I feel like Dentarg actually did a lot of good things towards the early game, uh, but then, yeah, perhaps was on my line of thinking where it's like it's such a long reinforcement point, it's unlikely that it's going to be kind of this attack ground force, but Seraph perhaps playing into that and instead just overwhelming him with units. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game two of Group A, match one.